Okay, welcome to session four of our summer school. Today we're going to be looking at chapters nine and ten of the boy at the back of the class. So today's lesson, our central objective is to use language devices to describe and you are going to do a piece of writing independently using descriptive words and interesting techniques. So let's have a look at chapters nine and ten. Um, the big fight and um, missing pieces. So let's have a look at some vocab first before we get started. Okay, so the first verb we're going to look at today is the verb plucking. So plucking is when you take a hold of something and pull it quickly from its place, you are plucking it. So for example, the image there um, shows someone plucking the hair from their eyebrows. You may also pluck um, a guitar string, you pluck the feathers from a chicken. So the synonyms for that are to remove, to pull out, to extract. Um, and you've got the example there from the text as if you're plucking out jewels from the roof of a cave. The next one is rubies. Now, most of you might already know this word, but rubies are a beautiful red precious gemstone. So they're a type of stone, okay? So it's also um, an intense purpley or red cover. So rubies are very specific color. So in Wizard of Oz, um, Dorothy has ruby red slippers. So we've got an example here because when you pull one open, it's like finding a billion, a million sparkling red rubies all squashed together inside a round suitcase and bursting to get out. So that's obviously describing the pomegranate there as the seeds on the inside, inside being like red rubies the word lunged which is a verb so if someone lunged forward their body moves suddenly forward usually to grab or attack something so you can do a lunge when you're exercising but the picture there shows someone fencing so when you lunge it's kind of that instance when you might stab somebody so we've got the synonyms there thrust pounce dive spring and leap so josie and tom and michael all lunge forward but chris was too and this word here, ransom. So when someone is kidnapped, they often ask for a ransom, which is an amount of money to pay for their safe return. So ransom means pay off, or it's a payment or a price. What were you really fighting over? Was it your parents' ransom money? Okay, so what I would like you to do now is go to your booklet and complete your own sentences using those four words. Everyone knows whose bag is where because everyone's hook has their name on top. Just days after the day of the deathly worm tray, Mrs. Khan told us to go up, get up and collect our pea kits from our bags, just like she always did on Wednesdays. But when Armit went to get his pea kit and unzipped his rucksack, a lumpy river of baked beans burst out and splodged and splashed all over him. Everyone cried out, ooh, and then instantly fell silent. Mrs. Khan was so angry when no one put their hands up again that she cancelled PE and Mrs. Sanders came and told the whole class off. It was horrible, especially because Ahmed started to cry when he saw what had happened to his pea kit and his bag. I think everyone knew it was Brendan the bully who had done all these things, but no one could prove it, not even Mrs. Khan. After that day, the door to the classroom was locked every break and at lunchtime, which stopped anything else from happening to Ahmed's things. But I wanted more than anything for Brendan the bully to be caught and to prove he was the criminal. So Michael brought in his granddad's magnifying glass and we all searched for clues. But we couldn't find a single one, not even in the school bins. Armit was more upset about the great bean bags trap than any of the other things that had happened. And even though Miss Hemsey washed his rucksack with lots of washing up liquid, it looked even worse than before and smelled strange too. But Armit still brought it into school every day. I wanted to know why he didn't get a new one or why Miss Hemsey kept saying that it looked fine when it didn't. And then I just two days after the great bait bean trap, I found out. We had all put away our books and were getting ready for group story time, just like we always did on Fridays when Mrs. Carr made a surprise announcement. Now, everyone, she said, this is our last afternoon before we all break up half term holidays. And I thought we could do with a treat. Instead of us all reading a story together, we're going to listen to one another instead. And it's a very important story because it's going to be told to us by someone very special in our class. Looking over at Armet and Miss Hemsey, she waved them over to where she was standing. I didn't know it just then, but I was about to have nearly all of my 11 or, original 11 questions answered in one go. We all turned around to watch Miss Hemsey, picked up a large pile of papers from the table and followed Armet to the front of the class. I want everyone to listen extra carefully and I don't want anyone asking any questions until after Armet has finished telling his story. Is that understood? Yes, Miss Khan shouted the class. Good. And leaning against the desk, Mrs Khan smiled and said, Armet. 
Everyone shuffled in their chairs and sat up straight, waiting for Ahmet to speak. I wondered if he would tell the story in English or in Kurdish, but I was so excited, I didn't really care. Hello, my name is Ahmet. I am nine years old and I am a refugee. I come from Syria. As he said this, he pointed to Miss Hemsey, who held up a drawing showing a house and a tree and a car in front of some mountains. And in front of the car were four people labelled me, mum, dad, sister and cat. This was the drawing. I was surprised because I'd never thought about Ahmet having a brother or sister. I thought he was like me and didn't have any. His sister wasn't in our school. In the picture, she looked smaller than him, so maybe she was in nursery. But in Syria, there is a big war, said Ahmet, and he pointed to Miss Hemsey again, who held up another picture. This one showed buildings on fire and bombs dropping from a plane and lots of people lying on the ground and other people holding guns. It looked like this. Josie stopped chewing her hair and looked at me and then looked back at the drawing again. And from behind, I heard someone whisper, whoa, he's seen a real bomb and a real gun. And one of the reasons I picked this story, because it's obviously from the perspective of a small child, is those pictures are really horrifying. So that picture there is absolutely mortifying. That's a nine-year-old child. That's the age of my son. Okay, so to imagine him living in a world like this is really quite emotive and that's what makes it so interesting that we've chosen a book with a nine-year-old narrator. Because of war, my family run away, said Ahmet, as his lion eyes became big and round and watery. We went on mountains and rivers and carried bags and cats. This time, Miss Hemsey held up a picture showing a family crossing mountains and rivers and in the sky, birds that were crying. In the picture, Ahmet had drawn himself carrying a red rucksack with a black stripe in it, just like the one he had now. That was when I knew why he loved it so much and why he cried when it had been filled with Brendan the Bully's horrible baked beans. He had carried it all the way from his house and over a mountain, which meant, meant it was lots more important and lots more special than any of our bags. This was the picture. Then slip nowhere safe, so we get on a big boat on Big Sea. This time Miss Hemsey held up drawing of the boat, but the boat wasn't like a normal boat with sails and pointy ends on wooden sides. This one was flat and round and was orange on the sides, just like the ones I'd seen on the news that didn't have any toilets on them. And inside the boats were lots of people, all wearing vests that made them look like puffin birds. But there were people in the water too, and they had bubbles coming out of their mouths saying, help me. Everyone leaned forward in their chairs and tried to read the labels Armour to put over some of the people's heads. I saw me and mum and dad, but there wasn't one for sister or cat. I know cats don't like water because Josie has a cat and she says it screams whenever it rains and always wants to stay inside. So maybe Ahmet's cat didn't want to get inside the boat and maybe his sister didn't want to leave it behind. So she stayed behind to look after it. This was the picture of the boat. So Ahmet's sister isn't on the boat. Now, obviously the narrator doesn't understand why that is, but we've got our suspicions. So have a think about where the sister's gone. Why would the mum and dad and the brother not take the sister on the boat? They wouldn't just leave her. So what do you think has happened? Then we were in another country called Greece at Armet. We live in tents with lots of people who run away like me. So that's a refugee camp. They come from lots of countries like Afghanistan and Pakistan and Eritrea. The next picture showed a flag with blue and white stripes across a blue corner and next to it were lots of tents and people everywhere sitting next to fires and sleeping on the floor. In this picture only the words me and dad could be seen. Ahmet's mum must be sleeping inside one of the tents and this was the picture. So again we don't know where mum's gone. Has this been separated maybe into genders? The women have gone one place and dad and Ahmet have gone another but basically mum and dad have been separated. Then we walk a long time in lots of countries. It was cold and we sleep on the floor and then we stay in France. This time Ahmet pointed to the next picture with his finger and showed us the railway tracks he had drawn. On it were people carrying suitcases and children and all of them were walking to a wall with barbed wire on top. Everyone looked so sad. And in the corner there were army tanks and soldiers holding guns and all the guns were pointed at the people with the suitcases and children. Miss Hemsey held this drawing up for longer than any of the others because Ahmet was looking at it and didn't seem to want to stop staring at it. This was the drawing. And obviously you've got your own books to look at, but it says no entry, no entry. So they're not allowed in there. And the little bubbles say go away. Clearly no one wants them. Then I come here and I come to school and I like it here. No bombs, it's safe and I like new friends and teacher and play football. Ahmet stood and stared at everyone and everyone stared back. 
sorry, it's a bit sad, isn't it, really? Mrs. Khan blew her nose loudly, and Miss Hemsey put the drawings down and gave Armet a hug. Thank you, Armet, said Miss Khan, standing up and putting a hand on his shoulders. Everyone, let's give Armet a huge round of applause for being so brave and sharing his story with us. And the reason I feel quite emotional, because this is a nine-year-old little boy, you know, that is the age of my son, and that's what um, this child is facing. He's, his dad doesn't seem to be with him, mum's not with him, sister's gone and people don't seem to want him and he's been bullied and victimized for, for no reason he hasn't done anything wrong we all clap but we didn't clap as loud as we usually do for stories because i think we were feeling strange i don't think any of us had ever heard a story like it before and as sad and scary as it was it was even sadder and scarier because it wasn't just made up story from one of our reading books it was all real Ahmed had survived everything in his pictures had shown us and was here with us, knowing that made me feel sorry and proud and scared for him all at once. But most of all, it made me want to tell him he was definitely the bravest person I knew. Now, as you've seen, Ahmet's story is very special, and I'm sure you have lots of questions you want to ask him, said Mrs Khan. Everyone's hands immediately shot up into the air, but I think mine was first. That's wonderful, smiled Mrs Khan, as she signalled to this to put her hands back down. But as Ahmet is still learning his English words, we're only going to ask him three questions. I want you all to write down just one question for him on a piece of paper. Mrs Khan walked around and gave us each a thin slip of blank paper. And when you're done, Miss Hemsey is going to pick out three questions we can ask him. You have a few minutes to think about your question and to write it out in your very best handwriting. Try to get all your spellings right and remember, just one question each. The entire class fell quiet as everyone grabbed their pencils, put their heads down and wrote out their questions. I had lots of questions that I wanted to ask, but I picked the one that was the most new and wrote that one out. After a few minutes, Mrs. Khan said our time was up and Miss Hemsey collected all the bits of paper. Everyone began to whisper to one another as Mrs. Khan and Miss Hemsey looked through our questions and either shook their heads and nodded. What did you ask? whispered Tom, turning around. I asked why he couldn't stay in Greece because the weather's warmer there and they have more seaside places, whispered back Josie. Oh, I asked how fast he had to run to get away from the bombs, whispered Tom. Michael, what did you ask, whispered Josie, leaning forward and poking Michael on the shoulder. I asked if it was scary to be in the boat and if he was on it at night time, said Michael. That's two questions, whispered Josie, shaking her head. And then she looked at me. What did you ask? I asked what happened to his cat and what his sister's name is, I answered. Oh, said Tom, but that's two questions as well. Right, everyone, said Mrs. Khan, clapping her hands so that we all start whispering and looked to the front of the class. We have some excellent questions here, but we've chosen three. I'm going to say them in English, and then Miss Hemsey is going to translate both the question and the answer for us. Right, the first question is, what did your mum and dad do in Syria? Miss Hemsey spoke to Ahmet in Kurdish, and he said something back. Miss Hemsey nodded, and then looking at us said, Ahmet's father was a teacher, and his mother wrote for a newspaper. Everyone in class nodded and we waited for Mrs Khan to read out the next question. I crossed my fingers extra tight in the hopes that it would be mine. The next question is, what did you like doing most before the war happened? We waited for Miss Hemsey to tell Ahmet what the question was and then reply. He liked to play football with his friends and going to the park with his grandfather and eating kibbeh. She smiled at Ahmet and before any of us could ask what kibbeh was, explained, a kibbeh is a very special snack which is filled with minced meat in the middle and is covered with lots of delicious spices. It's very famous in Syria and it looks like... Mrs Hemsey went over to the blackboard and quickly drew his shape. It looked like a small American football. Is that the right shape, Ahmet? she asked. Ahmet nodded. We all looked at each other and tried to imagine what American football with minced meat in the middle might taste like. As Mrs Khan held up the last slip of paper, I decided to cross both my fingers and toes, but it didn't work because then she said, and the last question is, do you still sleep in a tent or do you sleep in a house now? When Ahmet heard this question from Miss Hemsey, he shook his head and said something. No, he sleeps in a house now, said Miss Hemsey, and he is happy because there are toilet in it and hot water and food. As we all nodded to each other, Mrs Khan put her arms around Ahmet and said, let's give Ahmet another round of applause, shall we? This time, nearly everyone clapped much louder than before, and Michael even cried out, woohoo, as Armet and Miss Hemsey went and sat back down. But I could see Brendan the bully mouthing boo and making a face as if something smelled, and Liam giving a double thumbs down. I looked back at Mrs Khan and Miss Hemsey, hoping they had seen it too, but they were busy looking at Armet. Right, now everyone, before we leave today, I want you all to listen very carefully. Mrs Khan clapped her hands once and waited for them to settle back down. 
As I said, you all had some fantastic questions for Ahmed, and I'm very proud of you for thinking up such interesting and thoughtful ones, but, and here she looked at us with her eyebrow raised, which meant she was being extra serious and would be extra angry if we didn't listen to her. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that running away from a war and leaving your home is a very hard thing to do. And it's especially hard when you have to try and put all the missing pieces of your life back together again in a place that's new and strange for you. The Mrs Khan quickly glanced back at me and Josie and Michael and Tom and said, I know that some of you miss Ahmet when he's not allowed to go out and play. And I know you all have lots of questions for him, but it's important that he talks to people who know what he's been through and who can help him feel better. And it's even more important that they can ask him the kind of questions you all want to ask him in a safe and secluded space first before he's ready to speak to other people more. OK, Josie and I looked over at me and I looked over at her and Tom and Michael looked over their shoulders at us. So that's what the seclusion was for. It's so that Ahmet could talk to people. So, continued Mrs Khan, I want you all to promise to me that you won't ask Ahmet any more questions about the war or about his family without asking me or Miss Hemsey first. Is that understood? Yes, Mrs Khan, said the class, as the bell for home time began to ring. Good. Now, row one, put away your things and off you go. Make sure you have everything you need for your homework assignments for the half term and I'll see you in a week's time. As we waited for our road to be called out, I looked over my shoulder at Ahmet and wondered what pieces he was still missing before he could put his life back together again. It was like a jigsaw, I thought. I hate doing jigsaws, even the easy ones, because I always get bored halfway through and I couldn't imagine trying to do one that had missing pieces missing. I sure hoped that when he was running away from all the bullies and the bombs, Ahmet hadn't lost any of those important pieces on the way and that if he had, someone was helping him find the new ones that were exactly the right shape and colours that he needed. Okay, so they're two really quite emotive chapters really. And I want you to have a look at this extract that you've got. And I want you to think about how we feel for Ahmet when we read this part of the chapter, you know, what makes you feel this way. So have a little look at that section. And in your box, I want you to have a think about how do you feel there? Okay, so how do you feel when um, Ahmet, you know, sees the pomegranate and says, I have home. And in that moment, he feels like he's at home. And considering everything you know about what his home life was like, how do you feel there? And today's independent activity is to think about like what life was like for Ahmet um, in Syria. And what I'd like you to do is a piece of creative writing. I want you to imagine that you are, you know, there in Syria and that you've experienced what Ahmet has experienced. And I want you to talk about, um, you know, who the people are. I want you to think about what's happened to the people in Syria. Where are they going? What happens in the story? And I would like you to write a piece of writing today um, using that image of your inspiration. It can be whatever you like, it can be first or third person, but I want you to write an interesting description using that image as your foundation. And then I would like you to complete today's exit ticket, okay? So, what do some people think about all refugees? Who is your favorite character and why? What can you remember about Armit's journey from Syria to the UK? And what do we know about the narrator's family so far? So just make some notes on those exit questions. Thank you very much. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next session.